By popular request, I open up my field production video kit. That's all coming up on the next episode of Ham Radio Q&A. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community. If things like that interest you, you can do a few things for me. First off, like and subscribe. It really helps the algorithm. And also, check us out on Patreon. Patrons help keep the mission alive. That's over at patreon.com slash KB9VBR antennas. Well, uh, periodically, I receive questions about what kind of equipment I use for my uh, video production. And I enjoy those kind of questions, and I'm really happy to oblige. But you know, after I um, list everything out, uh, the person asking the question is actually a little bit taken aback by the uh, level, the level and depth of, of gear and uh, the complexity of the equipment I have for uh, video production. Now I know there's a lot of uh, YouTube content producers out there that are doing videos with nothing more than their phones and you know the phone is a is a is a great production tool and if you've got good content you can make great videos with your uh, your smartphone but um, since I've got um, a lot of experience in film and video production, a degree in film, uh, I've also, you know, in commun and communication arts, I've really come to rely on using a professional level equipment in producing these videos. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through my gear uh, so you can see what kind of works for me and hopefully that will inspire you in uh, producing uh, excellent YouTube content. Now with all that said, uh, this is, here's my field production kit. Uh, most of my gear fits into this Amazon uh, large uh, DL DSLR bag. Um, it's an inexpensive camera case. It's adequate. That's about all I can say about it. It's nothing special. I bought it about five years ago out of convenience because I needed something to carry my equipment. Uh, now, for the longest time, for about the last six years, uh, I've, been I've been shooting uh, my videos on the uh, Panasonic Lumix GH4 Micro Four Thirds uh, mirrorless camera. It's an uh, excellent camera, and I love the Panasonic line of, uh, of video equipment. I've been using them for years. They produce an excellent image, uh, na ex great natural colors. Just recently, I have switched to and upgraded to the Panasonic Lumix a GH5 um, Mark II a mirrorless micro four thirds camera. Uh, the reason that they kind of made the switch is because while well, my GH4 is six years old and while it's still been a workhorse for me, you know, it's, it's, it's also six years old and uh, technology has moved and advanced and I really wanted to kind of upgrade my cameras but still stay in that uh, Lumix line. I enjoy the I enjoy the pan the the Lumix cameras in, in their ability to operate. And moving from a GH4 to a GH5 Mark II made perfect sense. It'll do 4K. It actually will do um, in camera up to 6K uh, recording. I don't do anything with 6K, but uh, since getting the GH5 Mark II, I've moved over. I've moved um, all of my production over to uh, 4K uh, acquisition in recording. And um, the reason I did that is uh, twofold. Number one is better image quality because now I can downscale to 1080p uh, and have a better uh, overall image. And the second one is, is I can punch in, uh, get in close to um, something if I need to make a point without losing any image quality and um, having to reset the camera. Uh, the, the GH5 Mark II came with the uh, 12 by 60 uh, Leica DG Vario El Elmarit uh, zoom lens. This is an f2.8 f to f4 a zoom. Uh, the very high quality uh, optics. I really I like this lens a lot. For the couple months I've been using this camera, I've been really pleased with its ability to put out uh, an excellent image. So this is this the uh, GH5 Mark II will be now my main acquisition camera, and the GH4 that's recording this video is going to be my backup camera 
you know, now the cameras, you know, we always, we always tend to focus on the cameras, but really the most important part of any uh, video production is sound quality. And uh, audio really carries, I, I, I'm gonna say it, it carries 70% of, uh, of your overall video. You can get by with a substandard image if you've got excellent sound, but if your sound is garbage, you know, people are gonna turn off immediately. So uh, for top-notch sound, I do a couple of things uh, first. Uh, I'll wear a, uh, usually when I'm indoors in the studio, I'll use my wireless lav. Uh, this is the Rode Rodelink Filmmaker wireless microphone. Uh, I, I like this one a lot. This is the second wireless microphone I've gone through in the last uh, five years or so. Um, I, the old one uh, was an Asden uh, Pro uh, microphone. It was a good microphone, but uh, it had a problem with uh, strong Wi-Fi signals would always would always garble the audio quality, and plus you all, it it because it had an internal battery you had to plug the unit in to recharge it. Whereas the Rhodes had just take AA batteries. So if I lose battery power on my on my Rode uh, Rode links, I can just pop new double A's in and I'm, and I'm shooting. Uh, so, and that's very important when you're in uh, doing professional video is that you don't want a dead battery to really, uh, to slow you down. So if, if you can use equipment that takes standard batteries and change them if necessary, that'll make a really big difference. Um, for field production though, I like to use this microphone and this is the Assure Lens Hopper VP83. Uh, this microphone uh, goes onto the, uh, the hot shoe on the camera and it's uh, actually it's it's they call it a short shotgun microphone it's sort of um, like uh, more like a hyper cardioid it has some um, good signal projection out front and then um, sort of a null in the back so it it's got good rejection off the sides not excellent but it, it just enough to kind of cut that ambient sound down, but all, but the focus on the sound that's in front of the camera. And this is this is the microphone actually for field production that I'm probably using 80, 90 percent of the time. If you see me doing a Parks on the Air uh, a video, this is the microphone that's on the camera. It's pointed at me, and it, since it's it's got a, a very sharp pattern, it it does an excellent job picking up my voice and also the output on the on the transceiver. Runs on a AA battery, uh, which is also important. And it has um, on the back a, uh, it, 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 since it's a condenser microphone, you gotta power it on, but it has a low cut filter. So I can also um, uh, block out wind noise. The low cut filter actually works very well in reducing wind noise. So if you're in a, in a breezy situation, um, it, will, it will handle that very nicely. I do carry a backup microphone just in case. Um, and this is just a simple uh, lavalier that uh, will plug into the, into the camera uh, with about, I think it's about, about 10, 12 feet of wire. I've, I've been in a situation where my um, old wireless mic uh, tanked and I had to pull out the, the wired lav in order to finish a production. So uh, this is, power device, uh, just an inex inexpensive uh, lab that I carry with me in my case. Uh, next up is the, uh, the GoPros. Um, they, um, I've got a GoPro uh, Hero 8 uh, that I use, and I also have an older GoPro Hero 4 that I carry with me. Um, do, 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 do. Hero 4. Uh, the Hero 4 I will usually use in a production. I'll set this one up as time lapse and just let it run on a very long time lapse uh, kind of thing. Uh, and then I like to use the Hero 8's got better uh, 4K recording on it. So um, this is the one I will I'll put on, let's say on a table or something like that or sometimes I use a time lapse, or I got a suction cup in the in the car, or stick it on the camper or something. Uh, what I like to do is um, I'll do like a, a two camera sh uh, shoot with a, with parks on the air. So I'll have the main camera, you know, at one angle, and then uh, the secondary camera maybe back over here, 
and um, then I can switch back and forth. I, uh, in the editing process, I'll synchronize the audio between those two um, cameras so that I can, I can seamlessly switch back and forth to get sort of like a two camera production during the editing process. Uh, tripods. Tripods are very important. Any kind of any kind of stands that are that you can use to um, for your for your cameras. I for portable stands, the Joby Gorilla Pod. Uh, I like this one a lot. It's um, you can move the legs around so you can fit it in oddball places. I've used this to stick the camera in interesting spots in the vehicle or other tight situations. I got a smaller tabletop tripod. This one is a Coleman. Uh, this one I like is so it's, it's so compact that I can actually fit it into my camera bag. So I always have a tabletop tripod with me or I can, it, it gives me a little bit of extra reach. I can hold this out as sort of a, like a, if I want to do sort of a selfie mode on the, on the cameras. For my main tripods in the field, I'm using Bogan Monfrato. Now this is how old I am in, uh, in film and video production. <laughs> I've got, I've got Monfrotto tripods, Bogan tripods, back when they were actually labeled as, as Bogan. So uh, these are um, 80, early 90s vintage uh, tripods, but they're bullet, these, these things are bomb proof. Uh, aluminum, aluminum construction. So they're, uh, they're good, they're good uh, weight. Uh, this is the Bogan uh, Monfrotto 3001. With the uh, with the ball head and uh, the quick release plate, I've got quick release plates on all of my cameras, uh, and uh, and all of the other devices that I need to um, mount quickly on and off the tripods. So uh, it's it's easy to um, so that's you know it's, it's so I stay with a uh, consistent brand of tripods. It's easy to move from tripod to tripod without you know, having to change my, my quick release plate at all. Um, my second tripod, which is actually holding the camera for this production, is the Bogan or Manfrotto uh, 3021. It's just the, the next step up. Uh, it's a large, larger set of legs uh, with a video pan tilt head. And that one pretty much lives in my basement studio. Uh, I like this one because it's super lightweight that I can, and compact, I can take it on park activations and field productions. Uh, I'll use the more substantial tripod uh, down in the studio or if I'm doing a production where I need a larger tripod with the pan tilt head, I will, I'll grab that one. Uh, next up is um, lighting. Uh, lighting is, is very important to have, you know, I like, I like good consistent uh, image quality lighting in the studios. Uh, down in, in my basement, I'm using uh, LED light panels. Uh, a lot of times I'll take the light panel and uh, move it out here for an outdoor production just to give an extra fill light on, onto my face to sort of um, reduce that contrast range to uh, have a little bit more even illumination. Uh, for field work, I've got this uh, small uh, compact uh, video light. It's got an internal battery, runs for a couple hours. Uh, Ulanzi. I'll put links to all of this stuff in the video description. Uh, this is the one I'll use for like um, if I do a Parks on the Air late shift, I'll just I'll just either set this light up, either like on uh, on on like one of my um, tri uh, tabletop tripods, or it's got a shoe mount. I can stick it on the camera, and that just gives you just enough just enough fill light during a late night operation to uh, for a beautiful beautiful image quality. Uh, let's see, audio recorders. Uh, a lot of times I'm sending audio right into the camera. Sometimes I'll have a situation where I need to record additional dialogue or remote dialogue or something like that. Say if I wanted to mic another person, and but I only have one set of wireless mics, I can take one of these um, small compact uh, audio recorders. This is a Tascam a DR05, and I can plug my wired lav in here and slip this into the pocket and you've got an extra um, audio recorder, then you can mix that audio in. I also have a larger four track. Uh, this is the Zoom H4n Pro and uh, that, I'll, um, that I'll use for, for productions too. It's got XLR plugs 
on the back, which is really super handy along with other types of, of um, uh, line and mic level inputs. So um, a great tool for audio production. Uh, let's see. Uh, other lots of, and then and then everything else is pretty much just little accessories. I've got this uh, gray card here. Uh, you can use this for white balancing. I can use this as a focusing aid. Uh, very important uh, if I'm if I'm setting focus. Sometimes I'll record on um, manual focus, and I'll need to set focus uh, uh, for uh, for the shot. Uh, lots of adapters, uh, plugs, cables, uh, extra tripod plates. Um, this is just the hand the handy kit of, of of little goodies. You know when you're out in the field and you need to mix and match. Uh, plugs or adapters for field audio. And um, other GoPro accessories, extra mounts and clamps and things like that. And then I think the most important thing, I probably didn't talk about a whole lot, is um, batteries. Lots of batteries. Um, I use the, these cameras will chew through batteries uh, pretty quickly, especially if you're shooting 4K. So I have a minimum of, of two, maybe three spare batteries with me and a way to keep charging the batteries if it's gonna be a longer field production. The second thing you need is lots of carts. Uh, the nice thing about the GH5 is, is that um, I can put in two um, SD cards in here at a time. And then I also carry spare SD cards. I usually, I don't have, I don't use real big cards, about 128 gigabyte ones. Um, but I get, I've got multiple cards that I can, I can switch in and out if I fill a card up. And then I also carry a 500 gigabyte um, solid state uh, drive. This, this drive, then I can, if, if I fill up all of my cards, especially with the GoPros, I can offload that footage onto this um, SS drive, solid state drive for to, to free up those those carts. There's a couple other things that I use if I'm in the studio, like more lights. I've got more lights hanging. I also use a teleprompter uh, with the with the phone in order to uh, read this, uh, present the script uh, to the camera. And then finally, uh, this is only half. This is only half the production. So when I'm done when, when I'm done with the field, I got to bring everything back. Uh, home and then and edit everything down and for editing I'm using uh, an iMac uh, with uh, i7 quad processors 25 inch screen and Adobe Pre Adobe Premiere Creative Cloud subscription. I've used Adobe Premiere since the mid 90s so it's a it's a uh, platform that I'm very comfortable with and uh, I I think to this day I'll probably I'm going to continue using Adobe Premiere. It works really well for me and uh, helps me produce excellent content. Well, that's it for my uh, field production kit. If you've got any questions or comments, please let me know. I'll leave them in the comments down below. I'll leave links for all of these products in the video description if you want to um, search up any of them for your own productions. Or if you've got any questions, just let me know. But uh, that's but that's it. Um, for more articles and information, be, sh be sure to check out my blog at www.jpol-antenna.com. For support of this channel, drive this production in future videos, like and subscribe, and also uh, check us out on Patreon. Patrons help keep the mission alive. That's over at patreon.com slash kb9vbr antennas. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, kb9vbr. Have a great day and 73.